Hey there! It's June Lucal, and I'm here to do a stamping demonstration about watercoloring. So I have been a demonstrator for 18 years, and in case you're just joining me today, um, I'm an, also an art teacher, and um, I have something to show you today, something I'm kind of proud of. I'm, it's not done yet, but um, I think you'll like it. So um, I know, I, well, I'm pretty proud of it, so... Anyway, um, yay. So if you are here, I'd love you to say hi in the comments and, um, hopefully we'll have some more people join us. I've been going every other week here trying to do that. So I don't know if I'm going to get everybody, um, off, you know, it, we had a momentum going, but it was just really hard for me to keep up. And it's actually even hard for me to keep up with two weeks, but it's mostly cause it's this month. I've got my summer camps going on and, I'm just putting 110% into those, plus this art project I did for the library. So, um, well, I'm glad you're here. Thanks, James, and I think my mom is here. Yay! So, I appreciate your support so much. I can't tell you how much. I mean, I, I try to, but I'll, I'll never be able to explain it enough. So, all right, well... Um, I guess I'll get started, but first of all, um, wow, I guess I'm later than I thought. I thought I'd, you know, give another minute or two since I got this posted a little bit late. But anyway, um, why don't I show everybody, um, so I've been working on, the, let's put it this way, the Summer Reading Club is um, going on, and I'm the administrator at the library. Um, doesn't mean I actually work at the library, but I'm there all the time. And, um, they were trying to decorate for some reading club and it's, the theme was oceans of fun or something like that. Like, I don't know. So they ended up we there's some really creative people there and they made the circulation desk into a, um, what's it called into a ship. So they, um, made a mast with cardboard tubes and they had some met netting and they even had a parrot in a crow's nest that was like a basket and it, what it needed was a figurehead. So they asked me, they knew I was an art teacher and, um, artist and that, um, they asked me if I could make a paper mache figurehead. So I'm like, Oh, that would be fun. Of course, I wasn't sure how I was going to do that at the time I had, but I do love paper mache. So, I made her, I'm calling her Isabella. Um, I have her just next to me, but, um, she needs some color. She's got a face and hair now and her book. Um, but this is she appropriate for the library, I guess. Um, I still have to finish her. She's going to be, she's farther along than she has been for a while though. So, um, here is Isabella that I made her. And then I'm going to make it go, you know, shoot the, what is it called? The screen down. Okay. So here, you don't want to see my messy room. So there's Isabella and she is a mermaid and forgive my messy room, but there's the rest of her. And you can see that she is pretty big and, um, there's how I have her just holding a book and she'll be tipped toward, you know, the floor a bit, but I'm pretty proud of how she came out. So there you go. You can have your book back. But anyway, I want to color her, her, um, outfit and I haven't decided if it should go green or blue or some kind of thing in the middle. So anybody have any thoughts, let me know. Um, and again, forgive me my messy, messy room. Um, but anyway, here is the table, the desktop that we're going to get started on. All right. So we're going to start with this, um, stamp set green, green. Of course you guys both want green. You're so funny. Um, I might cause the floor, the carpeting is light green in the library and there's, um, some kind of extra floor mat that's like a dark it's actually just like this color that we're using. Um, what is this called? 
Beach. Evening Evergreen. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, green and blue. I don't know. Maybe I can try to fit both in there somehow. Um, I That was my original thought. And then I was like, you know what? She might look good in aqua or some turquoise or something. Um, somebody at the library said teal. So, I don't know. All of them would look fine, right? So... All right, so let's get started with this. So um, this is World Color Watercoloring Month. Did not know that was such a thing, but it apparently is. Um, and that's okay. I'm willing to embrace it because I do like watercolor. It used to be very intimidating to me. And that's talking as an art teacher. That's saying something. So if it's intimidating to any of you, completely get it. It is not the easiest thing until you realize that water does not have a brain and you have control over water if you understand some basic principles okay so we are going to use this stamp and this kind of appropriate for me too since we were just talking about the library and some of my love of it and I'm going to be going to school again in January hopefully to do that um, so I'm gonna do this library girl and then um, um, I've lost my train of thought. We're talking about watercoloring, right? Oh, the, how, how intimidating it is. Okay. So I've, I've mentioned this before, but there are two principles of water. Um, oh gosh, I saw a really big bird and it turned out to be a Canadian goose. Um, so water can, it has, uh, is cohesive and adhesive. So cohesive means it sticks to something else and add, and I'm sorry, cohesive means it sticks together with other water molecules and adhesion is like adhesive, like glue sticks to other things. Okay. So we know it sticks to paper, but cohesion is the one that we want to focus on. Um, so I'm going to stamp first of all, with memento ink. Now this doesn't work for some reason. I have tried memento ink on watercolor, good color, watercolor paper and actually makes a big mess, but this works fine on regular cardstock. I don't, I really can't give you a good reason why. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me either. So, um, I'm sure there's a reason and I just, just don't know it myself. All right, so here she is. And I'm also gonna stamp um, this relax. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. And that is good advice for me. And honestly, I'm not sure I completely believe it. That's what everybody says, but I struggle with productivity at times. I think part of it is because I'm really expecting to do more, more than I should. I mean, my list, my daily list always has 34 or more things to do. And, you know, if I count the ones from before, uh, that I haven't done that I mean to do, that can be 70 to 80. So I don't know. I just struggle with it. Um, anyway, I'm going to this is going to be, I believe, a spotlight technique. I'm not 100% sure on what people, other people call it, but it is going to highlight this particular or part of this, um, this, not the whole picture. We're not going to watercolor the whole picture. We're going to focus on a couple parts. All right. So I have this beautiful shapes. Yep. Yep, beautiful shapes dies, and there's some more hexagons that I want to use. So I'm going to focus this on the dog and the girl. All right, that makes your eye go toward that, and I'm like, yes. And then I'm also going to do this cup of coffee as like a secondary one. Okay, I wasn't going to do this originally, but I needed three elements because I have... One, two, and then I'm going to have the words. Okay. So that's, that's what we're doing. Now I also made this narrower on purpose. So this is now three and a half inches wide so that I can demonstrate this. And of course I did this 
wrong for my me being right-handed. I mean, I'm sure it would work. Uh-oh, I moved it. Um, it just would have been awkward. So... And if you need to, you can um, stick it down with washi tape or I am disappointed, but I, I understand why um, the, there is a magnetic plate going to be made for this, but apparently there were quality issues and Stampin' Up! does not want to sell low quality items, things, anything that's going to be a problem. They would rather not sell it at all than to sell something defective or things that they know a lot of things might be defective. So that's something to admire, but unfortunately I'm a little sad because it, the magnetic one is awesome. Um, at least on the other one. So, all right, so I'll put this washi tape, this old washi tape, just kind of Attach that so it doesn't go anywhere. All right, so here we go. Oh, I gotta stagger it too. Much easier if you do that. So that the plates are not exactly to get like, like they go in a little ease that ease it in kind of thing. Let's see, so much easier. So now, washi tape is cool because it, um, it's a light adhesive. All right, so now I have, two, well, two focal points kind of. All right, and then I also have this, which I have already run through. At a different time, I'm going to use this one. Okay, so this is going to go on here. Um, yeah, I'll. Uh, sure, I was going to put some twine around that, but I think that I can put it around the whole thing. All right. Um, Will this work? All right. Yep. All right. There's more than one way to do this, but I think I'm going to do it this way. Actually, I don't remember what I actually concluded because I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do it and I honestly don't remember my decision, but oh well, I guess I'll have to make it again. Um, all right, so there I have that. And this is gonna go over here. Um, and then to do the water coloring. Okay, so. Um, all right, I'm going to start, I made a little pile and now here's where I was talking about that cohesion bit. Um, first of all, the way to empower yourself over water coloring, be sure that you can do this. Water likes to stick to itself. So you, if you put a path where the water should go, it will go there. It will not go off the path unless you put way too much water that it just can't control itself. So um, if you're doing average amount, you can, especially if you're doing a large area. So um, first of all, I'm gonna start with a small area. I'm gonna do her face and her hand. So I'm gonna start with petal pink. And I kinda wanted to start with this because I started with the other color. In fact, my aqua paper thing um, is, I used the dark blue first. And it kind of made everything a little bit 
contaminated. So, all right, I'm going to, this is just, this is wet on dry. All right, so. Maybe a little bit more. All right, and then I'm gonna wipe that off. And then um, I wanna part, do a part that, oh, you know what? I didn't really color the, um, test out the colors I want to use for this picture. I'm going to make a peach mug. Okay. Oh. Okay. So then I'm going to purposely choose a color that is not touching those because if I make a path for the water, it's going to go there. So try not to have colors that are right next to each other. Let it dry first. There is something you can do if you um, need to do something that's right next to it. All right, so here, oh, that's right. I wanted to, I'll put some, um, this is a relatively small area so I can put down the, I did the direct on there, but if I can always, now that I've put water in a place, I can put this down and I can put the, the dark on the, the edges and now you can blend it better, if that makes sense. Okay. And then, let's see, I'm going to do her leg. You can always make it darker and see it's more likely to blend this direction than it is the outside because I have not put water there, but I have water there. So it's more likely to blend that way. All right. And then there's one more thing. This is the, the part. Oh, I didn't really need to do that. Um, the, like, the background. All right. So I'm going to actually put some, this will be wet on wet because I'm going to put water, oh, way too much. Sorry, squeeze that. Mm, let's see. All right, so this is gonna be wet on wet. It's very wet, actually. I need to almost dry it up. Not too much. All right, reduce that a little bit. Don't want to get it too out of control there. However, I am basically going to wash, give this a wash. And um, because I let that water sit there too long, now it's kind of looking this weird marbly looking thing. It will dry. Don't worry. It's fine. But this is kind of a wash. All right. And then I can do that kind of thing here too. Is just a small area so I can do that. All right. And then okay, so I've done everything I wanted to with the um, starry, starry sky. So I'm going to do crumb cake next. And hopefully that'll dry soon because there is an area I want to do her hair. So here's what I was talking about. If you need to do something close by, you need to do kind of leave a little bit of dry paper in between. Okay. So I'm not putting this right up to the edge. There's just like a little edge of dry paper. I don't know if you can see that, but, but hopefully by now my peach um, is done. And then I'm going to, this dog, I'm going to do kind of the, uh, Need the chest and the nose area, um, beige, and then or um, crumb cake, and then I think I'll give her crumb cake socks. All right, and then she's gonna have two tone socks actually. 
um, because what I also want, I'm going to use, this is a version of watercolors. This is actually watercolor pencil. And yeah, it looks gross. I should probably sharpen it, but um, because I used it for a different technique. And, uh, but it's just a watercolor pencil. And I make it a little darker in places where I'd want it to be darker. So I, I like, I don't want it to be gray, but it needs to, um, I don't want to make it so black that you can't see its eyes or any of the details. Oh, it's so weird. I can hear it in the other room. All right. I'm going to make the, you know what? I'm going to make, um, Would that be? I make a black. I'll make this black too. All right, so that's, so then you can take that if you want to. You can leave it kind of um, colored pencil-y. Okay, I made up a word there. Or you can kind of create a wash with that, like I'm doing here. Just giving, adding some water. And here I have a little darker. And then I'll put that there. All right, and then you can do that with the dog too a little bit. So, and also, if you have a heat gun, you can dry it in between stages, and that solves your problem completely, because it'll, it'll always be dry by dry next to dry. All right, so here, that's what I got so far. The next color I'm going to use is Mint Macron. Macaron. I don't know the difference between macaroons and macarons, and I don't know. Kind of an awkward word, honestly. All right, so um, here's another technique sort of way. I add it in the darkest areas, and then I kind of just like go until it runs out, kind of like I'm cleaning it off. Oops. That's another kind of technique. Let's see, I'll do this. And you can actually, I didn't come back. So, yeah. Now I feel like that needs to be darker down here. But see, I've almost left a little white, little edge of white there. Okay. So, actually, oh, I should have made this a chrome. Oh, well. Um, and then evening evergreen. Oh, I did forget something blue. Darn it. All right. So here we go. Um, I want this to be fairly intense and it's a small area. So I'm just going to go direct, dry, uh, wet on dry. And kind of like they did the book where the most, um, intense color. And so I'm leaving a little bit of, cause I did that black not too long ago. So I'm kind of leaving a little edge of white so it doesn't blend in. I'm not too worried with small sections like this, but, um, that would be the prudent thing to do. And then Let's do this too. All right. And then 
last color. Actually, I'm going to come back to the uh, Starry Night. And this can be fairly intense too, so I'll just go straight to it, but I'm going to leave that kind of little white edge. Which adds some, what's it called? Um, contrast. Okay, now I really wish I'd done this. I was, I couldn't remember. I was like, I had some plan for that. I can't remember what it was. I did not get a lot of sleep because I was working on Isabella over here till like 2 AM because I was really hoping today was the last day of summer reading club. And I thought I'm going to get this done if it's the last thing I do. And I, I didn't have class for my summer camp until noon. So I'm like, well, I can do it. So I, I went to bed late. I got up early. I was too finicky with the painting. So it didn't get done. Um, but she looks decent. And I will try to get some sleep tonight. So, all right. I have a hole punch. This isn't a, um, what you call it? Stampin' Up! Um, one. But it's pretty standard. And I just wanted to punch two here. So I'm going to go behind it and out here and then it's going to go, I think it's going to have it raised up. So kind of probably should have used little ones for that, but oh well. All right, so that is going to go here. I'm not going to attach it quite yet because I actually want to make it wrap around again. And then go through this again. Oops, I grabbed both of those. All right, so here we go. See, this hole is enough, big enough for, for the two of them, right? I'm going to make sure there's a little bit to tie with, and then I'm going to take these off. So it's loose, but not quite. Okay, and I'm going to kind of center that, but toward the bottom. All right, and then this is going to get kind of tighter. And that's going to go over here. And I'm going to make a little knot. And I'm holding that together, and I'm going to tie this in a double knot so that I can tie a bow. And this is linen twine. I'm sorry, linen thread. It's getting um, thicker. We used to have some that was way thinner than this. I don't know. Unfortunately, it's kind of covering up some of the words, which is not what I intended, but maybe I can scooch it. a little bit more <clears throat> there that's a little bit better okay so um then these are going to go right here where they fit and then this will go here 
All right, so I think I'm gonna glue those down. I was thinking about raising them up, but I mean, what do you think? I think that might be hard to see what's going on. So I will put some glue. I want to put this on some crumb cake, crumb cake base. There. So this is this would be something you could send to somebody, um, or maybe keep for yourself as a reminder, right? That's probably what I should do. Keep it on my desk and just remember. Um, these are two different adhesives and neither's better or worse as far as I can see. Um, in fact, a lot of times I raise it up whenever I have some kind of thickness here, but I'm going to try to I think that this is thin enough and it's far enough away that in the end that it'll still work. All right. So there is my card. And that would be the spotlight, I believe, um, technique. But I used highlight or um, watercolor techniques. So there, we got it. All right. So I want to show you one more thing. I don't have too much time to show you too much, but this is a very simple card, actually. All right. So what I did was I stamped using the beautiful. What is this one called? Um, butterfly Brilliant. So I got the B and the butterfly, whatever. All right, so this is a really big stamp, and um, I think uh, you guys can figure out how to ink that up. Um, I inked it up, and I ran it through, and then um, because there are... Where is that? It's got matching dies that cut it out. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this is, um, you know, you can do a lot at a time. Sometimes, like, you don't really want to do all of them. But I did want to do this one. All right. And, oh, no, this one. These were bonus. So I could do the same idea with this. No, I did want to do this one. Yeah, and it doesn't really matter. They're all going to be the same kind of thing. So um, this is, ooh. This isn't rich razzleberry. That is. Hmm. Well, you know what? I'm going to just get another piece of this and we'll use the, the um, I might have actually used this. Oh, well, let's see. I think I did use the, um, Oh my gosh, I can't use words today. Blackberry Bliss. All right, so basically I stamped with water soluble. That's what these are. Classic stamp pads. They're water soluble. So that means if I put water on it, it's going to be come off a little bit. Okay. It'll so I am just gonna take this is stamped a long time ago, actually. And I'm gonna put water on it. And, the, you know, if you spilled water on it and it smeared, that's kind of what we're doing here. But we're doing it on purpose, though. And these distinctive stamps actually lend themselves to this pretty well because there's already some really small dots that are already, you know, there. All right. So I'm just adding a little bit of water to this and making it look watercolored. I'm not even adding ink. Kind of like those water, those, um, what are they called? Coloring books, except that you, all you needed was water. It's just like, just add water or something like that. We didn't do those very often, but I do remember those as being an option. All right, so I'm just leaving a little bit of it white, just as a little contrast. All right. 
But see how that went from that stamped to watercolor looking. Okay, and that was took like two seconds. So you can see this could, card you could really crank out. Um, so I, um, I don't know, I think I did use Blackberry Bliss, but this would look really nice behind it. So I think I will actually, I was going all along thinking Rich Razzleberry and then they are in the same folder. And unfortunately, I cannot grab the paper. So every time I do, I get the old-fashioned kind that I have that has some textured um, Rich Razzleberry from like, I don't know. 10 years ago. I like it, but I don't have much left, but I do, um, I do have a little bit left, so. All right, now I'll just fold that. And what I ran this through, the one of the only current, um, embossing folders that I have left since the new, um, new catalog came out. And here, here it looks like this. Okay, and so I ran that through, and I'm just going to have that, it's just slightly smaller, so it's got a little bit of a border, and then I'm going to, um, well, I could do a lot of different things, but I think one of the main things I'm going to do are use these iridescent, um, what did I call them? Iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. All right. Here's my tinker pick tool. And there's multiple ways that you can do this, but let's see. I'm going to use this little shovel thing. Oops. I picked these iridescent ones because I thought they would really pick up the... They're just already slightly like that, and I thought they would pick it up even more, the purple. Let's see, cover this body up just completely. There. So I could raise this up. And hmm. I could just do one right there and have that kind of popped up look like it's coming off the page or not all right and one I feel like that would probably be okay but I'm going to I do like this um, maybe I will I may not have a bow or anything on this one I'm just gonna make a crisscross kind of imitate it. All right. So actually let's just tie it back here. Hope you can see my chair shrunk again. So I think I fixed it, but I'm still like I made this a little higher so you can see more of the, um, my tabletop. All right, so something like that. And then when I put this on there, I almost think maybe I need to put more dimensionals on it now. Okay. All right, so let's stick it down. And this is gonna be a quickie card. Again. 
makes me think of like a specimen, you know, where they pin these butterflies. Have you ever seen those at the museum? Um, you know, at the rainforest exhibit, when I went there with the boys a long time ago, they had this kind of like a ranger's room kind of thing. And they had, I don't know if it was a ranger, it's like a science, a scientist cabin kind of thing. And, um, all right, so there's that. They had all this, like, collections, butterfly collection. All right, and then I have some white cardstock to go with, you know, the rest of the theme and to make it so that you can write on it. And then I thought, um, I'll do Blackberry Bliss since I have that in some places, and then some words. So, I don't know. This is very generic, but we could put any kind of words. Maybe I'll just won't put words for right now, but you could put, I'll just, they call this tipping it in. Let me just put a tiny bit of adhesive. That way you can rip it out if you had to. Okay. All right. So there, that was really quick, wasn't it? You could make a lot of those in a very short amount of time and it looks very watercolor too. So um, all right. So I hope you like those and thank you for joining me. Um, I, like I said, this is world watercolor month. Um, but a couple things that have come out, um, I'm going to show, this was just the first couple techniques. I have some more to show you next week. Um, but a couple things, if you are interested in getting this paper pumpkin one, you only have a couple more days. This is unbelievably gorgeous nautical themed cards. And now I'm kind of bummed because I accidentally, the last one was fine. I liked it. Okay. But this one, I really, I like a lot better. And this one says that there's a game. So if you want to play, see if you know, paper pumpkin quiz. See, I'm all about puns. So that makes me want to do this even more, but you can scan the QR code. Um, or I, they sent out, it's on my email, my, it's a post, I believe. And you can, there's a link that you can go, but you just answer the questions and no wrong answers won't disqualify you from the prize. Um, but you, they want to know your email if that you have signed up for your paper pumpkin and then winners will be notified with their one month prepaid paper pumpkin coat. So you can get a free month. Um, you can win that. So that's kind of, um, you know, anything get more out of what you would or normally get is awesome. Right. So, and then I guess the, where did I see that? Maybe it's not on this paper. Um, the August one has some free thing in it too. So if you won this one, and you got a free um, paper pumpkin kit, you could potentially get this other August one that has a free, everybody would get a free item. So that's coming up. So that's just, you know, planning ahead, I guess. If you're interested, if you like this and you might want to get another one or get a another free one, who doesn't like free, right? That's something. All right. And then also check out online on my website, I have the new mini catalog came out and it's also celebration time again. So, um, I'm not going to go through all of this, but there are some really cool, um, Christmas items, not just Christmas, but holidays, I guess. Um, some really cute ones. I like, um, snowflakes are back. Of course, that's just a good generic thing for everybody. Um, some of the, there were a couple that were repeats, but there's a lot of other good ones. There's some fall ones. I really like how they use sea foam here. These, this color combo is pretty nice. Um, let's see. There's Halloween, of course, and ah, fall is really pretty. Some more fall. Oh, I like this one. I think I'm going to get this one. I have not ordered yet, but this snowman one was really cute. And this one, of course, made me think of Lynn. Those of you who know Lynn Hubach and knew her, um, she would have loved that one. And then um, this one is pretty neat. I don't have a window one. I know there, there have been some window ones. I haven't gotten it, but that would be a good one. 
Anyway, lots of good things in there, and it is finally here. It finally went live on July 1st. And then Celebration, if you order $50 or more, you can get some free items just for ordering. So there's this Hippest Hippos, kind of cute. And I like this paper. Look at that paper. Can you see it? Really like that paper. It's got little little houses on it. I love things with little houses on it. Um, and fall. And I think those are poinsettias. And there's mushrooms. All sorts of fun things. Um, this one's, um, these are great colors. Pool Party and Soft Sea Foam. They're card bases and envelopes. It's like a set. Um, so many cute things. So these are all things that you can get for $50.00 order or you know, every $50. So if you get a hundred dollar, if order a hundred dollars, you can get two $50 items or a $100 item dollar item. So they're, they're just bigger. Like there's a lot of parts to that one. This one is dies that goes, it coordinates with one that's in the new mini. Um, and it's tree lot, which is tempting for me since I grew up on a Christmas tree farm, we sold Christmas trees every year. So that would be kind of cool. And then this one's got flowers, which are very pretty. You could turn them any color if you want. Um, and this one, I like this one, silver and gold designer suits. So those are embossed and you can make them any color and you can add details. So like, see how they put pool party over here and crush curry over here and just totally change the look of the paper. And yet it's the same paper. So anyway, lots of cool things. Check out, I have the PDFs on my website if you are interested. Um, and if I did not send you, I did send out some, but it gets expensive to send out free catalogs. Um, I do have extra catalogs or I will actually, I don't, I don't think I actually have them yet, but, um, if anyone wants one and didn't get one and would prefer not to look at the PDF, uh, just let me know. I will get you one. All right. Well, have a great night. Thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate that. And um, I will see you again in two weeks, which I probably should have figured this out, what that date would be. I think it's um, July 19th. Okay. So mark your calendars for July 19th. I will be back doing more watercolor techniques. All right. Well, have a wonderful night. And thanks again. Bye.